Hey guys! Today I'm going to do a tutorial about how to make the water bomb. Um, it's a very common origami model. A lot of children make them. Um, the point is that you fill the top with water and then you throw it at people. So I guess that's fun. Um, if you're using a very flimsy paper like I used here, I wouldn't advise filling it with water because you may not make it away from the sink. But if you want to use a thicker paper, um, that's a cool, fun thing to do on a hot summer day. So, let's get started. Okay, for this model, we're going to be using a square piece of paper. And to start out, you're actually going to be using a water bomb base. Surprisingly enough, we're making a water bomb. We're using a water bomb base. So let me get that. I actually have one already made. Whoosh, magic. Now, if you don't know how to make a water bomb base, I already have a video up about it. Um, you sh there should be a link in the description bar below, and there should also be a link on the screen. So you click on that, and you come back in just a second, as soon as you're finished making your water bomb base. Okay. So to get started with this, we're going to start with the um, two flaps on either side, two fl triangle flaps, and with the open end, the part that is open like this facing towards you, and with the tip facing away. You're going to want to make sure, especially, that you have the colored side on the outside if you want this to look pretty, because if you don't have the colored side on the outside, it won't show up in the finished model. So you want to make sure your color is facing out. Okay, the first step we're going to do to this is we're going to make a crease using just one layer of one side. It doesn't matter which side you start, we're going to be doing both sides. But I'm going to start here with the right side. When you do this, you want to make sure that you leave that back layer behind because we're going to be doing this in the back as well. You're going to take this point and you're going to fold it all the way up to meet the point at the top. And you'll notice that as you do this, the crease that you made when you made your water bomb base is going to be right along um, the line that you're making the, your new crease on now. So you're going to hold that, get it as close to perfect as possible and then go right along the line. And I cannot emphasize enough making sure you get your creases as close to perfect as possible. It's not necessarily the most important thing in the world. It's not going to completely ruin what you're doing, but it is one of the most important things in origami. So you want to make sure that you understand that. Because if you get messy creases, you're going to get messy products at the end. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do it on the other side. Just like the same as we just did. Make sure to get your creases nice and firm. And now you can see we've got kind of a, a square shape made out of two triangles in the middle. And you've got the two slaps from the back here along the back. And we're going to flip it over and do the same thing on the back side. Bring it up to the top, crease it, like that, and then bring it up to the top, and crease it, like that. And you can see that I've got a little bit of a gap down here at the bottom. Um, that's okay, because as you make origami, it's going to, you're going to get little discrepancies like that. Um, but it's not if you make your creases messy, it's going to be worse. So that's not necessarily if you have because you have messy creases. That just happens. A little tiny thing that can cause that. Now you see we've got our square on this side and our square on the other side. And we're going to turn it so that the line in the middle is going side to side. And we're going to make crease as close to perfect as possible. This is going to be tricky to do with these all these points going everywhere and you don't actually need to crease the whole way down. Just that middle part. Just pinch it. Right where those two lines meet. And then open it back up. So now you've got a little bit of a crease there so you can tell where the center between here and here are. Okay, so now you're going to take your two points 
that are the um they're not the ends that that are connected it's the two sides where your two flaps are the same way we've been holding it all along yeah you don't want to use the end where the points are separate like this you want to make sure that they're the ends where they're connected and you're going to go ahead and you're going to fold that so that it meets your center line there and you're going to do the same on all four of the flaps do it there, flip it over, there, and there. So it's just like that. Now here's where the tricky part comes in where you have to make sure that you're um, getting things as close to perfect as possible to make the end result come out. You're going to be holding it so that the part where all the flaps are together is at the top and the part where they're all separate like this and different is at the bottom. And you're going to take one of the sides, it doesn't matter which one, we're going to be doing it to all four of them. One of these little triangles at the bottom and you're going to fold it up so that it, the crease that you make rests right along that line. And your triangle is sticking out along the side there. You're going to do the same to the other side. So now it kind of looks like you have a square shape right here and you've got two triangles poking out like that. Now make sure you make those creases nice and firm because we're going to use those to make a fold later. You're going to fold your corners right back down and then you're going to fold, actually fold these up again so that your crease, it's not along that line right there but the edge of here is along this triangle. And you're going to do the same to the other side here. So now instead of it being up here, it's down a little ways so you have a tiny little square in there and you've got kind of a diamond shape here. Okay, so now you're going to unfold that and you've got two creases there and there and there and there. Now if you hold this just right and you poke your finger in between these triangles, it'll open up. You can see you've got a little pocket in there. And you're going to just pop that open so that you can um, get something inside it. And you're going to pull up the triangle that's on that side and poke it into your, your closest crease. That's the one that you made with the little tiny square where it rested along that line. So that it goes in is all the way to the edge there. <clears throat> and now sometimes with origami you're going to have to make your creases more than once just to make sure they go there. But that doesn't mean that you're going to want to skip the first one because you're going to be making it again later. Um, the first one can al always be a guide, so you want to fold that up along that line. Just again, just to make sure you have it good and firm. Open up your triangle again and just push that inside right over the second, or the sorry, the first piece that you folded in. So now you've got that entire flap that was down here, this flap here, is on the, that was on this side is now inside that pocket. You're going to do the same thing with all the other four flaps. You're going to stick the triangle inside to the first crease, fold it over, and then stick it all the way inside like that. And go to the back, and this one we have to make our creases again. You could do them all four at once, or you can do them like I did. It doesn't really matter make those those and then you're going to open up your pockets again and put the triangles inside the pockets up to the first piece fold over pop it open again and up to the second piece. And then your pocket on the other side. These can be kind of tricky to open, so you want to make sure um, that you're not ripping your paper or anything when you do that. And you're not squishing it too much. And the second one. Okay. And go ahead and give your paper a good flattening out just to make sure everything stays where you put it. 
And now you've got two triangles on here. You don't have any opening flaps at the bottom. You don't have any open flaps at the top on either side. And you're going to lay your paper down. You're going to fold up this bottom point so that it meets the other two points in the center. Like that. And you're going to do the same with the top so that it meets the other two points in the center. So now you've got a square. You're going to open those two points you just did back up. Turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. And you're going to be trying to go along the same crease that you made on the back. This is just going to make it easier so that when you open it out, um, you'll be able to fold along those lines to make it a square. If you don't want to make it a square, you can just step, skip these creases all together. But I think it looks neater as a square. Okay, fold those back and forth a few times just to make sure they're well creased. And now here comes the fun part. You're going to take your flaps and you're going to pull them out so that they make kind of a, I don't know, a dreidel shape, I guess. Ooh. Now, yeah, you're going to pull them so that you can hold them just like that. You see that there's a little opening in the top. And here's the part I can't really show you because I'm back here behind the computer screen. Um, but you're going to want to blow it up just like a balloon through that top portion. And I'll do that real quick and get back to you. Okay, so I just blew it up through the opening there. And if you find that you're having trouble, for instance, let's go back down. Say that you end up with something that looks like this and you can't get it to blow out any farther. It could be because you have um, your creases aren't quite as neat as you'd like them to be or maybe you just have your paper too thick. Um, what you could do is you can just pull on the corners and try to pull it out a little bit more to get it into the shape you want. Or if you're really, really having trouble, sorry, and grab yourself a needle of some kind. I'm using just a I don't even know, a knitting needle, something I found on my floor, and just push it in there through the opening and pop out the edges. And then you should be able to just open it up to where you want it to be. Just using a little bit of persuasion. Um, origami's always going to need a little bit of extra primping, so just go through and tighten your edges make your square neater. Um, this is a never-ending process, truly. Um, just get it to where you're happy. And I suppose if you're using a thicker paper, you can go ahead and fill this with water at some point. I am not going to do that because I think that would be really messy and I'd be afraid of ruining something. It happens all the time, I promise. And that's the finished model. Um, I will be taking suggestions for what to make next if you have something that you've just been dying to know how to make and you're having trouble getting it or you just want to see me make something. Uh, leave a comment in the comment box below or on my channel and I'll see what I can do about it. Thanks guys. Have a great day.